about that. Okay, great. Yes, the first success. Let's take all of our small wins and build from there, right? <laughs> well, for those of you who I've not met, my name is Joe Garvey, and I'm one of us at Agile Assets. You can, uh, you should be able to notice most of us from Agile Assets with the yellow lanyard. So those of you who have blue, you are the invited guest, and those of us who are yellow, we are uh, primarily hosts and uh, looking to have a lot of fun with everybody. But if you have any questions uh, during the week or during uh, any one of these days where a session is or maybe you need a little extra help on anything, uh, just let us know. Find someone in, in, a, in a yellow lanyard. I want to first just start by uh, laying out uh, kind of a layout of the conference facility itself. We have a... We have three main rooms, and we've got some other auxiliary areas. The first is this is the main, the main session room, uh, room 204. And then downstairs, we have two classrooms, classroom 103 and 105. All of this information is in your conference guide. So if you get a chance to review your conference guide, you'll see a tremendous amount of information. These are just really highlights. We have some new stuff happening this year, including some workshops, and I believe that is in, uh, that's one in the lower, one of the lower classrooms there. We also have a dedicated IT desk, a help desk. We know lots of folks have internet connection. We've got some software that we're going to introduce if you haven't signed up yet. And as you are just out there on the way to the Tejas room, you're going to want to remember that that's where our meals are at and many of our break areas. There's a, a good-looking group of people back over there by a folding table. That's our Agile Assets, part of our Agile Assets IT team, and they'll be able to help you if you have any inter internet connectivity uh, or any computer issues or anything like that. So we, we came ready for uh, recognizing technology is a big part of our life, as you well know. Uh, we also have the registration desk, Houseman and Associates. Uh, I've been uh, are the part of the backbone of what we do right there. That's where you guys would have all registered. So anything related to that, related to hotel registration, uh, if any questions on that, making sure you have your name badges. If inadvertently we've misspelled something, we can reprint the main name badges. We want folks being called the, the right names. Not names, the correct names. In addition to lots of education, and I think if you've seen so we've got a lot of sessions on educational sessions, and that's really the meat of this, a big, big part of the educational content. We, we also want folks to get to know each other. And we've already seen that starting last night at the reception for many of us. Uh, over throughout the week, we'll get a chance to get to know each other more. We're going to be going through a roll call here in a little bit where we identify the agencies and the companies and the, and the people who are here. Uh, but we also have these networking events. I want to kind of outline those real quickly. Tonight, we are going to be having a, a get-together, a meal, and some time at the Bob Bullock, the story of Texas History Museum. It's about just across the street. It's about a block, a block and a half. It looks like the weather is going to treat us well, and so we're planning to just kind of meander over. In the event that you have, for some reason, it's going to be a, a little strenuous to walk, Again, let one of us know in the yellow, uh, the yellow lanyards, we can figure out some kind of transportation, but it's just a nice little walk. Oh, and really, a, a shout out for those of you who woke up this morning and did some move your assets on the run and the walk, and for the Agile Assets folks who really went out there and, and led, uh, I think we had about, what, uh, 18 people, was, was Ashley here, what do you think, 18 probably, something like that? We had, a, we had a nice little run around the Capitol, a nice little walk around campus. So this evening, we'll have a, a nice relaxing time, get to, to do some peer networking. Tomorrow night, we've had a lot of feedback where it says that uh, a little time to enjoy and explore Austin on your own. So tomorrow night, we've backed off the agenda and let people kind of go uh, explore and adventure inside of Austin. It's a neat city. And then on Thursday night, we'll be wrapping up. We'll have been done with our sessions at that point, and then we'll be able to roll into a, a final night, kind of celebrating the things that we've learned, the new friends that we've met, the, the information, and the kind of looking forward. We'll be down on 4th Street. There's a, there's a little venue down there called Cedar Street, and we'll have a nice band and um, some, from some food and, and really have a nice time there before folks are mostly heading out on, on Friday. 
So that's, uh, that's kind of the agenda for the evening events. I want to bring some attention to SCED. It's, a, uh, it's an application. Has anybody downloaded and loaded up SCED? Okay, these are you, mostly your IT folks, right? I mean, a lot, a lot of smart software folks here. All right, well, it's a good thing it's not too late. So inside of your agenda, there, in, uh, your, your program, there's a link there. And this is, this is an application that can help you keep track of your own conference, the sessions where you want to go. You can even export it to Excel. And you can, you can find out what's happening. You can also view the attendees. We have made a concerted effort this conference to ensure that we know who's here, what interests they have, so we can cross-pollinate that. You can access it through the web browser on your phone. That's what I've been mostly doing. And of course, if you have any troubleshooting problems, we've got the IT desk out there that's well, well versed in how, how to help. I think you'll find it helpful. Uh, some other housekeeping items. Uh, there are professional hours. You've got, I think it's page 47. Yeah, page 47. It's a bit self-service, so make sure you identify those areas that you want to get, get credit for professional credit so we can uh, make sure you make the most out of this week, make sure it's a very valuable week to you. Uh, we have some, um, some live streaming, so forward that. If you've got some colleagues, uh, whether at your agency, at your company, friends, let people know there's some streaming sessions and we welcome you to forward that out. We're looking for more people to, 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 uh, to learn about that. The schedule for those particular sessions are, are at the website there. All of these sessions are going to be recorded, so we'll be able to capture them. I think that uh, part of our providing value to you and your organization is have providing tools that you can bring this back to your agency and to your organization. Uh, in the event that you taxied from the airport, we, had a, uh, we learned a little bit about our FASTEN, which is... Uh, a, a transportation network company, TNC, a little new for getting the vernacular. Lots of people call it Uber, but it's not actually Uber. It's called Fasten on this one. Uh, there is a code for you to be able to use, and it expires four days after you enter the code. So in the event that it entered, we, got, we sent you a new one out. Don't be bashful. If, you have, uh, if you've taxed it and we're looking to reimburse you, we'll make sure you take care of that. And uh, we will be waking up our assets again on Thursday and uh, getting out there for a run and walk. It's a real, uh, real treat, nothing too hardcore. So any other housekeeping items from Agile Assets folks that I forgot or any, any particular questions? Okay. We're introducing uh, today a, a new uh, um, item here in this RIUC. It's called Roll Call. We actually adopted it from GIST, which is a different conference in the industry. It's a great way just to kind of walk through. This is alphabetical. For those of you who didn't provide information, we just want to recognize you. Uh, thank you very much for those who did identify it. It's, it's, um, it's alphabetical. I want to start with Alaska. Where's our folks from Alaska? All right, right in front. God, love it, man. All right, Alaska. Um, the, the attendees here, Alaska is a pretty, pretty interesting place. There's lots of, every state's got its own story, but certainly Alaska, the largest state. This is some interesting facts, some particular challenges. They've got a major budget deficit challenge that they're working with, and so I think this is a particularly important conference to make the most out of that budget you have and maximize that value. Uh, they're just going into implementation right now, and so uh, thank you. Welcome to, well, welcome to the user conference, guys. Uh, we have Atkins folks here, at least one. I saw, so, well, sorry, I don't have to, it's because say hi. <laughs> She's got her the stuff on her lap. So uh, Michelle Russell, thank you for being here. I saw Donna last night. I think Satnath is going to be here later. So welcome to uh, to the conference. It's great that you could be here. Uh, we've got uh, Michelle is from from Europe, from England, and uh, doing a lot of work here. And we've got some other Atkins North American folks. Uh, these are the folks that will be around, and, and I'm sure that uh, they'll be around all week, so thank you. Uh, Caltrans, Zongren, do I see Zongren here? There's Zongren right there. Welcome, Zongren. California Department of Transportation, longtime user of our uh, PAVEM. That's the, the code term in, in Caltrans for pavement management with the Agile Assets. Some of these particular interesting facts. One of the largest DOTs for certain. Uh, MAP 21 performance measures. 
uh, customization or enhancements of the pavement management system they have there, and uh, some key initiatives that are happening with Caltrans with regard to pavement management. So thank you for carrying the Caltrans banner and being with us this week. So thank you. Let's see, and I think I saw Ed pop it with, there he is, oh, there's Ed right there. Ed, welcome, Ed's with the city of Austin. And uh, we're real pleased to be working with, with Ed and his team at City of Austin on pavement management. I thought, well, a particularly very important aspect of Austin is it's headquarters to Agile Assets, so I threw that in there. And uh, we've got constant expansion growth challenges. Lots of us live in Austin, and we, uh, you know, a lot of the folks who think they're from a very highly congested area, they visit Austin and they realize that Wow, Austin actually is quite congested. It's not a sleepy little college town like it was some years ago. Um, and really just looking to maximize that. So Ed, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Ed. Uh, we also have city of Mansfield. Um, we've got, uh, is Steve Cook here? There's Steve. Steve, welcome. Welcome, I know you're, uh, Steve's, uh, I haven't had a chance to meet you personally, but thanks for being here and kind of exploring what this is all about. We don't currently work with the city of Mansfield. We certainly would like to. I hope that you find this, this venue and conversation and unfettered access to those who are using and what their, what their challenges and what their initiatives are. So welcome to, to, uh, to the conference. That's great. We also have DBI Services. Is Dayton here? He, didn't, he hasn't made it yet anyway. So. DBI Services is uh, one of the largest state um, uh, maintenance management um, services kind of group. They're out there, are the ones doing the work. They've done quite a bit of work throughout a lot of the DOTs in the country. I believe they're the largest uh, maintenance services operator for the rail network in the United States. And, uh, and they're really looking forward to understanding what, what we're doing, what each of you are doing, and uh, finding if there's a uh, a good opportunity. They have a separate system they've been using to manage their maintenance, but they realize in their case, a significant value for them is understanding what it really costs to maintain the roads so that they can actually be, run their business better. And uh, it's, it's quite, quite, uh, quite exciting. So we hope to see Dayton later this week. Okay, Delaware. Where's Rhonda at? There she is, there's Rhonda Lewis. Rhonda Lewis is one of the most long-standing participants of the, of the Agile Assets IUC. Rhonda, do you know how many conferences you've been to? This is my tenth. Tenth conference, and how many conferences have we had? <laughs> We've had 13, so that's, that's awesome. Thank you for staying and being committed. It, it, listen, Sarah, they couldn't come, but she, but she pushed them to the direction. Yep, I, I, I'm... I'm going to let it go. I'm going to, we're going to do it. There's some really great things, some excellent, um, interesting facts about Delaware. So the first is there's famous people from The Small Wonder. I didn't actually know it was the, the turn on that. So you'll recognize many of these folks, but these are big names in the world, okay? First, we'll start with this person here, okay. vice president, nonpartisan whatever. It's still a respected position, and so we're happy to see that. Uh, we also have famous basketball uh, players uh, in, uh, in and around from Delaware, so you'll recognize some of that. For you, those of you who like the, um, I guess, what the uh, E! Entertainment and kind of stuff, we've got some, some other famous people here who are celebrities. And then probably the most effective and the people that really bring the most value to those of us in the room is right here. Angie Green and Eric Perrone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like the, um, the key initiatives for 2013 for real this time. I think that kind of captures every, every 18 months, we do get a chance to kind of reset the energy, reset the expectations, and really try to work hard to bring value to the, each, each of our organizations. And then finally, this is the beautiful and the great small wonder state of Delaware. What you can't really see is the black is the road that we make everyone stay in the wilderness. The green is the road that we make everyone stay in the wilderness. Not. So, Say that one more time. So the black roads, which looks like most of them. Yes, it's about 89% of the roads in the state 
Wow, great. Okay, great. Well, that's 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 excellent. I know you guys have a that's a pretty dense network for for a full state. That's great. Thank you, Rhonda, for being here. Okay, we have some folks also from Esri. Anybody from Esri arrive yet? I didn't see him yet. Am I missing him? No. They'll be arriving tonight. Okay, very good. So, uh, as most of you have seen, we're doing a lot of work with Esri. Most of you are working with Esri Technology in your agency um, through Stewart's leadership, Michael Lester's leadership, we've uh, and, and David Armstrong. We really uh, 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 grabbed on to the adoption of the Esri platform technology and making sure that we're we're leveraging tools and technology that you have. So we're happy to have Esri with us here this time. We've been working. Actually, we've been a partner of Esri's for for many, many, many years, and. And I, I don't know that everybody really r recognizes that. We've been interoperable with Esri. We've been using ArcPad as part of our mobile platform some years back. Our network management tool that we have had and that is deployed in Idaho is based off of Esri technology. And we are, but we are, we are embracing more and more to the core mapping tool of, of ArcGIS server, uh, as well as working a lot with roads and highways, the LRS tool as our, as our core preference for for linear referencing systems, and we're doing an awful lot of work. I think Gary will have a chance to, to provide us more information on one of our presentations later. We have some Fugro folks. I saw Jim, Jim Moulthrop here. We've also got some others that are, um, that are we're expecting to, to be joining us. Fugro's been an important partner of ours. I know they do a lot of work throughout the, uh, throughout the country on pavement and data collection, roadware. A lot of you using that technology. We've worked with Fugro for quite a long time. Uh, Jim is going to be able to share with us some industry uh, highlights. I believe it's on Thursday, if I remember correctly. And uh, we're real pleased to have Fugro with us. Jim, thanks for being here and for the Fugro team. Georgia. Where's our Georgia folk? I saw Renee someplace here. There they are. All right. Welcome, Georgia. Very good. Uh, we've got uh, Renee, Larry, and Charles. We've got... Uh, Lots happening in Georgia. Georgia is a very important state. Uh, lots of folk are, folks are looking to Georgia for leadership, especially in the eastern area of the U.S. Um, lots of interest. We've got some interesting facts here uh, from Georgia. Uh, we are continuing to work with Georgia. We've got new exciting challenges that we're trying to keep moving and keep uncovering and keep rolling good things out. It's a complex challenges. And uh, I think there's a lot we're going to be able to learn. Some of the improvements that we keep making are important feedback from agencies such as Georgia. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Idaho. We've got a good, strong group in Idaho. Where's our Idaho folks? There they are right there. Welcome. Welcome back to, to uh, let's see, who, who's been to IUC before? All of it? Steve, no? First time, huh? Okay. Well, I see Steve all over the country talking about the cool things that are going on in Idaho, and especially we've got, I think, the presentation with the AVL this week, and that's been something well-received throughout the industry, so thank you for Idaho. Idaho's got lots of uh, interesting things. I did not know that it has a seaport. That's pretty interesting. And uh, uh, I didn't know that uh, Snake River Canyon is deeper than Grand Canyon. Not as wide, though, right? No? Okay. And... and um, there's always some good challenges there. Idaho uses the Agile Assets maintenance management, pavement management, equipment management. They also are, I believe, functioning well with the network manager, the linear referencing tool that we continue to support and make sure that that delivers what's there and, and potentially working with Idaho on, on any kind of future activities there. So great to have you here. Thank you, Idaho. All right, Illinois. Who's from Illinois here? There we are. Welcome. There you are. Okay. This is the first IUC that you've been to, right? And we had a little bit of a, of a hiccup on that state budget thing, but it's great to have you here. Really, really, thank you. You can't, you can't control all of the state budget issues, but thank you for being here. We're, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's great. I mean, you guys are really a critical state, especially you know, with the huge huge activity state in the country, and certainly right there with Chicago as a major urban, a lot of rural, so a lot of those same challenges. 
Um, 43,000 lane miles, urban and rural. Um, half a million tons of salt. I can't quite get my head around how much salt that is, actually. 30 years of accomplishment inventory data. Uh, 2,300 negotiated rate employees. What is a negotiated rate employee? It could be a highway maintainer, a concrete finisher, a carpenter, anybody, you know, operating engineer. Okay. Hire out of the does negotiated rate kind of mean union? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We have some that are state employees and some that are union. Okay, great. Well, like with, with all states, you do have some resource constraints, trying to make the most out of it. And again, I think Stuart's going to be speaking quite a bit about how do we, how do we bring the value and realize that the, that the real value is making the right decisions. And so I hope that the implementation that uh, you guys are, do you have a go live schedule? Yeah, within the next year. Yeah. Well, we're real happy to be working with you, so thanks for, thanks for being here. All right, Illinois. Where's our long-term, long-time friends from Indiana? There they are, right there. Welcome, welcome back, Indiana. Now, have you guys been here before? No. This is the first time. Okay. Well, um... This is the International User Conference. Thanks for being here. We've been working uh, with Indiana for a very long time. I think we've always got new challenges, and uh, Indiana's been using our system for a road a work management system or a maintenance manager. Uh, facilities, I think, have been active in there, and, and quite a bit of things happening, and working, I believe, with the Esri Roads and Highways. There's some integration happening there, and so that's a, that's a critical area there, we've got some interesting, in, interesting activities here. Let's see, Lafayette, Indiana was home to the first attempted airmail flight in the United States. John Wise set out to establish the record for longest recorded balloon flight and delivered 123 letters while he was at it. But luck was not on his side. <laughs> Boy, that's a very cryptic way. We don't, <laughs> like, we, I mean, maybe the mail made it, but may, maybe he did not, I guess, you know? <laughs> Luck was not on his side. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, the um, compatibility of system and ease of use of mobile applications, I think you're really going to enjoy what, what uh, Michael Lester on the product side has to, to share, and, and uh, Dr. Pilsen and, and Joe Iwaiko are going to talk about a lot of the mobile things. So um, we certainly, uh, through, through what Stuart's been driving and, and, and most of us is just mapping and mobile and ease of use. And I think you'll find quite a bit of that later on this morning. So thank you. Welcome to be here. And I believe I saw Charles Chuck Larson. Where's Chuck at? He was here. I thought he was here. Oh, there he is. Hey, Chuck. Welcome. Welcome to IUC. Uh, uh, Chuck works with the information services um, a group and does a lot of work for DOTs on behalf of DOTs and helps to guide business practices, uh, go through the process, what are the policies and the methodologies as well as the, the tools. And so we've been working with Chuck over time in West Virginia. We've known Chuck since his days at Virginia DOT. He's been a real, uh, real important leader throughout the, uh, throughout the industry, especially in pavement. So thanks for being here, Chuck. That's great. Many of you know, I think we do a lot of work internationally. Well, we're excited about some developments. Where's Thierry and his group? Is he here? Thierry here? There, there they are, right there. Okay. Uh, so Thierry uh, and, uh, and Juno Infrastructure, they represent, well, it's Thierry's company. They're working with countries in South Africa uh, as well as countries throughout Southern Africa. There's a current deployment happening with, uh, well, if you're in the know, it's Joburg. But it's Johannesburg. I'm still not in the know. I'm still working on that. But Johannesburg, the city there, and I believe they're, uh, they're currently working uh, with Pascal and with the European group, with Phil Balance and Tyler Mickle, to extend uh, potentially safety and some other modules and really bring the kind of tools that are required to manage such a diverse and important uh, road network and throughout the community and throughout the broad area. That's pretty exciting. So... Terry, thanks for being here. A 
Kentucky. Where's Kentucky? Okay, there you go. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to have you back here. Uh, Kentucky's been a long-term uh, partner with Agile Assets and customer of Agile Assets. There's uh, some new initiatives happening right now, actually. So with, with, uh, with Aaron, Chad, and Andrew, they've been around with working with Agile Assets since 1999. My math says that's about 17 years. That's a thank you very much for the commitment there. Uh, you, uh, Kentucky uses our maintenance manager product it's with this foundation, maintenance manager uses um, the equipment or the fleet management system for the DOT. Also with the pavement management system, I think there's some exciting things that can happen there. Actually, they're working with the XOR product, and so we've got an integration work that's been very active recently, looking to get that across the finish line, where they can make sure that the linear referencing system that, that Kentucky's using with XOR is able to be exchanging data very well with Agile Assets. Uh, some good stuff with the AVL happening, and uh, actually one of a very good example uh, with Greg Earp. Where's Greg at? Greg's back over here. He, he's uh, with Agile Assets, where they're walking through the hosting area. And so there's a kind of a recognition out there that, hey, we want a single throat to choke. We want to make sure we have a good performance, and we want to make sure that, that Agile Assets is responsible for that. And I think that's given us an opportunity to be more successful and provide more value and to ensure that it's a good performance. So thank you for being here, people. <laughs> Kircher, where's Kircher Engineering? I saw some folks around here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There we go, okay. Okay, there's, there, there we go. Um, Kircher Engineering has been uh, uh, really a partner with Agile Assets for a long time, primarily in the eastern area. They're doing a lot of neat work with municipalities, some common platform, pavement management primarily, also work with some some of the folks in Idaho, also work with some of the folks in New Mexico, I think. And um, so it's great to have uh, Alan Kircher and Kircher Engineering's team here. So thank you. <laughs> Louisiana DOTD. They're back row guys. There we go. Very, very good. Well, thank you for being here. Vince and, uh, and his team back there have been uh, active with Agile Assets really for a very long time now and really stuck with us and helped us to continue to improve. Louisiana originally licensed a, a, a series of modules, including really most of the Agile Assets suite, and has been very uh, actively integrating with SAP on their financial side. They're very active in the work management side. Uh, we constantly are working with them to, to ensure that the network data, the linear referencing data is working and we're, we're constantly uh, that's one of the biggest challenges in the DOT space, quite honestly, and so appreciate working and being good partners with us there. Uh, mobile areas, uh, the, the DOTD, okay, if you're not from Agile Assets, you don't work with them, and you don't, you're not from Louisiana, what does the D behind the DOT stand for? Development. Development. I think I love it because actually the economic and the development impact of the DOT is so huge in a state. It's a monstrous organization with a tremendous amount of work. And some of the things, it's not up here, but some interesting things is the response that you guys were able to provide the folks in Louisiana during some of the real difficult natural disasters. The DOTD was really right there, and it's a great story of, of real value that you brought to the people. So uh, some of the key initiatives they have, they're going to be uh, using some of the level of service areas and uh, some of the mobile devices that we're, I think we were talking to, to, uh, to you guys about. So thank you very much, Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. <laughs> All right, one of our newer groups, Minnesota. Where are we at, Minnesota? There we go. Good, strong group from Minnesota. One of the more recent go-live groups. Oh, I like it. David's right there in the middle. There. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good catch. Uh, Minnesota has been one of the more recent uh, go-live agencies. So we're pretty excited about uh, what, what you guys are doing. I think you've taken the, the step in terms of establishing a, an enterprise platform for managing assets and starting with some business areas and expanding from there. We're looking forward to continuing the journey on that. Um, 
53 inches of average annual snowfall. Uh, how does that compare to the guys from New Mexico in a minute? I'll ask you how many inches of snowfall you get in New Mexico. Um, there's, um, I think some of the, every organization has a bit of a challenge with the organizational change, right? I mean, technology is almost the easy part sometimes. Not always, but sometimes it's the easy part. But it's getting the organizational change, the adoption, the embracing of that. And, uh, and especially with Minnesota, really your executive leadership and making sure that happens, I think that's been a huge step. You've got a, a big advantage uh, to be able to help trickle that down or make sure that the field users. And the other aspect of that is usability. And I think you'll, you'll hear uh, Michael Lester talking a lot about really the drive for usability. And uh, in fact, thank you for those of you that have been working with our product group to help us to improve, understand what it is that we need to do to make usability better. There's going to be a second phase of the Agile Assets implementation and uh, continue to bring more assets on. So. Minnesota, thank you for being part of the family and welcome to IUC. If not the largest contingency, we have Montana here and from three major departments. Where's our Montana folks? There's Montana. It's like the whole side of the wing over there. Yeah, well, we've been working with Montana, I think. Stuart, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the Montana Department of Transportation that first deployed the pavement management system back in 1994. And they've been, that's incredible. That's great. Let's see, quick math. How many years is that? 22. 22. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, 99 was good, folks, but I mean, you know, 94, that's very impressive. It's been neat to watch. Watch Montana. Montana's taken a bit of a more of a federated. Instead of being all consolidated, they've deployed not just pavement, but then they added equipment management to manage your, their equipment uh, in the DOT. Then Fish, Wildlife, and Parks added some work with respect to um, their uh, non-DOT equipment. And then the governor's office got wind of it, and I think it was Mr. Tooley that decide, no, maybe the, the director before that said, hey, we can jump on, and there's the government, the governor's council of, of agencies adopted a, a software subscription for their fleet. Uh, and then a few years ago, we deployed the, so, the uh, safety analyst product, which was really, I'm very excited. I just met for the first time Patricia, who's now uh, running their safety uh, uh, program. It's called SIMS, and she's a little shout out for the presentation that Patricia is going to be giving, uh, I think later this afternoon. Uh, and it's actually won some federal awards. I was up there um, presenting with uh, her predecessor, Craig, up at uh, a national conference a couple of weeks ago. And now they're deploying the work management and the maintenance manager. And so really, this six people represent major bureaus of Montana of the maintenance operation and the engineering operation and the IT operation. So thank you, Montana. And I know Doug and Mike and, well, I'm not going to start going through names. I'm going to mess that all up. But thank you for being here and thanks for being with us for so long, Montana. <laughs> Let's see, something interesting. 46 out of 56 countries are considered frontier counties. I guess that just means there's nobody out there. Maybe that's what that means. <laughs> All right, well, that's great. Thank you for being here. Um, oh, actually, where, where's the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks? We're here too? Oh, there he is back there. Not, so it's seven folks from, from Montana. Well, welcome. Um, I don't know if I've had a chance to meet you, Tim, but uh, welcome to Agile Assets. Um, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, one of the first, it was, um, I don't, does it say what year? I don't know that we have, it was, a, it was a long time ago when we first implemented it. It was one of the, maybe the very first subscription delivered software that we provided. And this was, gosh, Stuart, it must be nine years ago, eight, nine years ago, something like that, that uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And it really opened up our recognition that there are agencies, your, your DOT folks, your peer agencies that can really benefit and value from Agile Assets. So... Great to be here. Thank you, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. 
from, from a state level, I think that puts you over the top in the clear lead for the most delegates from a state. All right, New Mexico. Now, we've gotten more folks than the two listed here. So uh, where's our New Mexico folks? There they are, right back there. And I think there's four of you, right? Four of you, not just the two here. So we'll have to sort that out. New Mexico has also been a long-lasting, a long-time uh, customer, starting with pavement management from a long time ago, and then most recently deploying the maintenance manager under Derek Edwards and Tim Walton's leadership, and for statewide maintenance management, they are working through that process to go. They've gone live, and they're moving that forward. Uh, there's actually, um, a, there's we were talking last night. They're a they're a state that uses PeopleSoft, as many of you do. I think we have maybe seven agencies that are integrated with PeopleSoft, and we'd like to, to keep working with, with you in New Mexico to, to make that happen so you can get better information, make better decisions, and bring more value to, to the people of New Mexico. So thank you for being here, New Mexico. And let's see, New York State, nice dot. There you guys are right there, okay, very good. Welcome, Mike and, and Steve. Uh, New York is, I gotta, I gotta have to say, one of the, if not the most ambitious of the DOTs with respect to broad asset management. Uh, they worked very hard and negotiated very hard the ability to deploy a lot of our of our products. And through Steve's leadership, also Rod Seacrest was is, has been around in this in this conversation over years, and uh, really bringing asset management and the thoughtfulness of managing those assets well to New York State DOT. In fact, not only are they actively implementing, um, there have been a leader nationally with the FHWA. I think it was not only New York NYSDOT, it was also Minnesota and Louisiana that were the other two of the asset management plans, um, creating the true enterprise system in terms of making sure that it really is available for everyone throughout NYSDOT. And, um, and then add some of these additional modules that can help bring enterprise decisions together and, and make better. But there's really more than this. Um, a couple of things I want to give a direct appreciation for Steve, for you and your folks, with, with some of the other initiatives that are happening in the state of New York. I think it's a really a great example of the DOT is investing time, energy, thought leadership in getting out in front and other agencies in the state are recognizing, hey, we can leverage that. I don't want to say coattail because it sounds like they're not doing anything, but really they're, they're taking the, the, the direction from the DOT. And so with that, New York City DOT has become familiar with Agile Assets and we, we hope to, to be working with them. So the next IUC, we hope that New York City can join us. Uh, the, the, I believe it's under some type of way, the Department of State where there's an initiative to bring the tools and the techniques uh, of what's happened with NYSDOT to the other smaller communities. I think Fishkill and Dutchess County. It's a downstate pilot. Uh, we're trying to create a business model that would essentially allow the DOE to provide the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, that's great. That, that's, a, that's a pretty neat deal because there's no way that those smaller agencies would be have the many of the resources, not just money, but knowledge and, and a whole series of things to do what NYSDOT's done. So for them to be able to piggyback and to be able to draft off of that's really a great service to the people of New York. So thank you, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. That's great. And I think, Mike, this is the first time you've been to the IUC? Uh, no, this is the second one. Second one, OK. It's going to make a big impression the first time it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you came back anyway, <laughs> so, all right, all right. I'll be making these small gaffes all week long, so I, I keep making mistakes. All right, North Carolina, where's the North Carolina folks? There they are, right back there. Pretty strong contingent with five, and so that's pretty good with fi five of the folks here. Is it five, am I right? Six, who am I, I'm missing somebody on here. Delbert, didn't. Oh, right. Late. Okay, well, no, Delbert's on the list here. Yeah, they don't, they don't like associating with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's on D, so we don't even. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 <laugh
That's, that, that'll be part of the conversation all week long, I'm sure. So, well, welcome. North Carolina has been a, also a, a, a customer for a very long time and implemented a lot of our uh, uh, modules and really uh, made a lot of business value. Drive. North Carolina, let's see if we got some facts here. Um, before we get to the first Pepsi was created in North Carolina, one thing people don't always know, it's, it's, it's one of the two largest DOT in terms of miles in the country. Texas is approximately the same size in terms of miles, but North Carolina is about the same size. TxDOT and North NCDOT are really very close one and two. And then number three drops off a little bit. I think it's Virginia that drops into the 50s where the, it's 80,000 centerline miles in North Carolina and Texas. And it's because there really are no county roads, right? I mean, it's really the states responsible for all of those roads, which puts a huge burden on what's happening. In fact, we discuss sometimes internally on performance level the amount of data and the amount of, of network decisions that are going on are just substantial with North Carolina. And so, uh, so that's uh, pretty exciting. Let's see, um, is that 358,000 miles of roads, I guess? Lane, lane miles, yeah, not roads. That would be a lot of roads, actually. <laughs> Let's see, the first Pepsi was created and served in New Bern. I know someone who lives in New Bern, Mr. Edgerton over there. I didn't know the Pepsi was, came from there. And that was in, what, 1898. Babe Ruth hit his first professional home run in Fayetteville on March 7th. The first drawbridge built in the U.S. was built over Cape Fear River and uh, Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is the tallest lighthouse in the United States. Oh, North Carolina's got full of activities and congestion, actually. I think you also have some congestion issues going on in Raleigh and Charlotte a little bit. So, well, lots of initiatives. Um, so thank you very much for North Carolina for being here and welcome to IUC. <clears throat> All right, new metric. Do we have new metric here? There we are right there. Well, I don't want to talk too much right now because we have a special announcement coming, but I can tell you that Numetric and some of the product they have, some of their technology, I should say, we are adopting, and I'm going to save that for somebody else to share, whether Stuart or Michael. Well, actually, that's on the screen. Um, <laughs> so don't read that. We're pretty excited about the Agile Assets Summit. It's, uh, it, it is answering the call to some of the questions that each of you or many of you have been asking and making sure we have a, a good way to access data and explore that data. And as we were determining the name and trying to figure out how do we, what do we call this? And it really is taking a look at the data and being able to dive in and dig. And we're gonna see a demonstration of that data and we're real thrilled that we have a, the technology partner of New Metric driving the Agile Assets Summit product. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Ohio. Spread out. I like it. And they're, not, they're, they're kind of keeping some distance with each other and making sure they... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying it's good to see people spread out a little bit and not flock together. Um, Let's see, am I correct? Do we have six of you guys, Dave? Jim, yep, okay. Well, thank you for being here. We've been working a lot with, with uh, Ohio DOT. In fact, some of us were up recently working with, with you folks since you're really your you're, uh, directors of, of the deputy directors and the, and the leadership team, making sure that we're, we're uh, bringing the value and helping to, to understand what that value is. So uh, there's some interesting things about Ohio. Seventh in total population, sixth largest interstate inventory. I did not realize that. Second largest bridge in inventory. Let's see, how many bridges is that? Do, does anybody know offhand? 27,000. 27, and that is second to, to Texas. <laughs> just, I wasn't loading that up. I just was asking the question. <laughs> No, that's great. That's very good. Um, let's see, we've got some replacement integration of key systems. Uh, PeopleSoft, another PeopleSoft state, making sure we've got good integration there. 
it is very important from a value perspective ensuring that the engineering activities and the asset management ties into the financials and the work being done and brought through all the way to be able to make better decisions. Uh, ultimately, a great explaining what you're doing with your assets financially can help legislatures understand how to provide the appropriate amount of assets for that. Key initiatives, integrate uh, roads and highways. I think there was some activity already started on this or at least getting ready to get, go, get going, and so that's exciting. Um, and um, making sure that we have uh, integration of ass additional assets into the Agile asset system there. Um, and then we're going to keep pushing forward there. I know, I know Ohio is a very, very um, important state in terms of infrastructure. Nationally, it's very well respected. So thanks for all the leadership that you guys are doing in Ohio, and thanks for being here at IUC. Let's see, Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Where are we at? There's Stephanie, Alex, there's, okay. And um, where's Clay at? Oh, where are they? There he goes. Hi, Clay. Welcome. Okay. So Oklahoma, um, I, uh, I'm going to find out what Oklahoma standard with humanitarian programs. I'm kind of curious about that. I'd like to learn about that in just a minute. But let me first explain, Oklahoma is such a good example on many, many things. One of them, not only they're using our, the Agile Assets Maintenance Management System and Fleet Management, managing uh, facilities, I believe, in there. Um, what are some of the other? It probably captures most of it. Equipment, I think, fleet in there. Uh, and also a PeopleSoft implementation, I believe, some integration there. Uh, in fact, I think, are we maybe working with some hosting at some point? That's, I think that's happening right now. Alex, that's what you're working on. But I want to voice this. Alex has been, and, and, and Stephanie and, and uh, Clay and the rest of the team, but really been a big leader in working with FEMA on some stuff. I mean, the folks have come and said, help us understand what we can, how you can, how does your system respond under demands of the Federal Emergency Management Agency or administration, and how can you get data? And uh, talk to Alex. Alex got some very interesting experience with respect to um, providing the data that's required to be able to be properly and fully reimbursed in a timely manner by FEMA, which has not been everybody else's experience across the nation in terms of just getting reimbursed by the federal government. I think we had some experience a little bit like that in Louisiana. Uh, but being able to properly use the, as, the Agile Asset System to access that data and to provide those uh, questions that the administrator asked, that's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, now, what exactly is Oklahoma standard in terms of humanitarian? Does anybody, does that make, make, make it? It basically is just time about the people doing it. Yeah. You just did the fifth and started the first one too. It's funny, I was just gone. I can't help but bring this out of my list last time. I did. We're, we're building a moral foundation for fallen workers. We're using the education program to really try and walk robbers and getting kids to enjoy art and rock star classes. So I didn't want to presume that. I wanted to kind of hear that from you. So th thank you. I don't know if everybody heard that, but really what we're talking about here goes back to that, the role of the DOT, and not just roads and, and preservation of those roads by themselves, but being there for the people at time of need and time of beautification even. And so, you know, you're right there in Tornado Valley, and, uh, and there's been a lot of humanitarian challenges with that. And even that... Um, a related, a sister agency, the Oklahoma Turnpike, has also been part of that. So I think just that whole spirit of giving back to the community is, a, is very admirable for the people of Oklahoma. Now, no banter between Texas and Oklahoma, <laughs> but I think there's a lot of admiration for, for, for what Oklahoma is doing in that level, and specifically what you and the leadership of Oklahoma DOT are doing. And now, uh, with Tim moving over to the Oklahoma Turnpike, we hope that we get a chance to, to, to spend some time with them as well. So, thank you for being here. Let's see, Texas Department. Where's TexDOT at? Oh, there they are, right there, right in front of Oklahoma. You guys are sitting so nicely together. <laughs> That's good to see that. <laughs> it's very good to see that. Well, we are pretty excited about the things that are happening in Oklahoma, in uh, <laughs> Oklahoma, 
I'm never going to live that one down. I just, well, it's going to hurt me all week. I know that one is going to specifically hurt Magdi. I know Magdi is going to be on me. Um, with, with what's happening in, in TxDOT, Texas has been a, a, a user of Agile Assets for a long time. They've deployed our maintenance manager system. Internally, it's known as Compass. And uh, it's been uh, the Agile Assets maintenance manager has been the maintenance operating system for record since, I think, 2007, something in that, in that realm. So eight to 10 years. Uh, and most recently, we've also deployed the Agile Assets Pavement Analyst. It is the largest state network. And uh, we've had fun between North Carolina and Texas on that uh, in previous IUCs. But it's, uh, it's a very demanding, very urban, very rural, farm to market challenges, oil and fracking, and all kinds of types of things. Well, Magdi uh, and his leadership, in terms of what's happening with pavement analyst, Michael Lee, who Magdi uh, works with, also with respect to the maintenance operation, uh, they are really working towards FAST Act, and that's some federal legislation. They have deployed our, the, uh, the pavement analyst, and uh, really, I think, uh, Magda, you and your team have done such a great job getting the adoption from the users and getting positive feedback so people really want to use the system. They recognize the value. That can bring the value all the way through to the taxpayers and the people of Texas. To be able to deliver that through a a managed service or a subscription model uh, so that uh, we're excited to, to be able to provide that performance and ensure by, ho by hosting your system, making sure that the performance is there and work closely with you on the system performance. So um, I know there's a couple, at least maybe two presentations with TxDOT this week. Uh, I encourage everyone to, to be paying attention to what TxDOT's doing. So thank you, TxDOT. Thank you, Maggie. Okay, Virginia DOT. I see Michael Kahn right there, long-term contributor to the Agile Assets uh, IUC. Thank you. Uh, very large agency also, 126,000 lane miles of roadway. Um, Virginia DOT has been a customer of Agile Assets. I don't really know how long offhand, but it's been quite a while, maybe 2008. 2008. Okay, great. So we're coming on eight years now, maybe over eight years. Uh, they use, they currently use our system for their pavement analysis. They contributed meaningfully. For those of you using pavement analysts and some of the tools that Eric Prone and his, his uh, colleagues will be probably speaking about is what I call the uh, multiple constraint, the overlapping multiple constraints. And there was some real driving analysis needs from Virginia, and they worked with us, they shared with us their use cases, they partnered with us, they teamed with us, and they brought, they brought the ability for us to understand the challenge and respond on the analysis tool set to be able to, uh, to improve the product that is now widely available for, most, for everyone here who's using pavement analysts. So um, some of the other initiatives and challenges are up here on the screen. And so, uh, Michael, thank you for being here, and, and uh, thank you to Virginia DOT. <laughs> All right, and what do we have here? A state of West Virginia. Where is West Virginia? We have some folks in West Virginia? Okay, right back there. Very good. Okay. Good to see you guys. Very good to have West Virginia here. Uh, there's been an active implementation going on. There's a little bit of hiccups occasionally with the project on that. We are so close. We really want to push it through. Uh, we are, where's Marsha? Oh, there's Marsha right there in front of me. It's really hard to see everything here. Uh, Marsha is uh, one of the leaders in the, in the country with safety. And alongside uh, Patricia, have you, have you guys met by chance, Patricia and Marsha? I think it'd be very good. This is a good example of how we kind of find out what folks are doing. From one side of the country to the other, Marsha's been a real leader in implementation of the safety uh, analyst and the safety management system for West Virginia. The West Virginia DOT and the state of West Virginia are deploying an awful lot of, of um, uh, modules uh, with Agile Assets. There are some statewide modules that are being deployed in terms of, I think, maybe real estate and fleet and facilities maybe was the idea. Uh, and also we have transportation, asset management, asset inventory, operations management, 
uh, some of the uh, other DOT type areas. It's a very aggressive and ambitious uh, plan for the state. It's also in integration with CGI. Some of you know CGI. I think Kentucky's a CGI um, a customer, and so is Idaho, um, Utah maybe. And so a uh, very ambitious plan. Well, along with all ambitious plans, sometimes there's, there's disruptions along the way. And so we're working very hard. I know David Armstrong's working very hard, and, and all of us are supporting the process of making sure that project gets the finish line. And um, the people of West Virginia really need the, the ability to, to manage those assets, and really the big money is, is making sure you, your assets are taken care of. And so I, I hope the leadership and the, uh, can keep pushing through, and I, I believe it is. I believe it is. Let's see, what are some of the interesting transportation facts? Longest steel span arch bridge in the western, oh, this is the, Gord, the New River Gourd Bridge. So you guys all heard of bungee jumping, right? Um, the state of West Virginia sponsors bungee jumping like off of the Gwis Bridge. It's ridiculous, actually. <laughs> you know, it makes me think there's probably uh, an appropriate amount of attorneys there, like not that many. <laughs> Sorry, is Val, hopefully Val's not here. Uh, the first tunnel in the nation uh, to be monitored by television. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Outdoor advertising. This is another area that um, our uh, industry leader, Jim Edgerton, has always been talking about. So that's interesting that that happened in West Virginia. Uh, the NBI program uh, resulted in the Silver Bridge collapse. Resulted from. Okay. The NBI did not cause it. It came from that. Okay, very good. Completion of our complex, the ERP, that's the CGI implementation called OASIS there uh, that was started a few years ago. Uh, I think that's what we're trying to push all the way through. Uh, complete the remaining portions of the ERP project and get certification and um, uh, for billing and reimbursement from the federal highway. So very ambitious and uh, we want to do all we can. So thank you to West Virginia, the state of West Virginia and the DOT. Thank you for being here. And Wyoming, where's Wyoming at? There we go, right there. Welcome to Wyoming. Wyoming's got a legacy and a history of innovation, actually. Wyoming was the very first implementation of the Agile Assets browser-based system. And uh, it was the first time when it was going from uh, older technology really into browser technology. And I know this was happening, uh, maybe, was that 2005? Four or five, does somebody know? Well, okay. Um, and so I think that was pretty exciting. There was a full suite there with, I think it was um, PeopleSoft, right? That was his implementation with PeopleSoft. And the, the, the asset inventory and the maintenance manager with pavement analyst and uh, equipment fleet. IT, uh, there's the telecom towers that I think are being managed through there. Uh, a whole whole broad spectrum, and uh, so it's good to see you. Good to see you here at the IUC. What do we have here for interesting facts? First, to give women the right to vote in the 1925. This was governor. Yeah, she was elected governor, right? Ta um, Taylor Ross. Yeah, that was. I found that quite interesting. The first, nation's first governor, and that's nice to. It's kind of good to see when you're the first of things. You're the first. Um, kind of on an important social issue, the important, uh, first on an asset management issue. That's good to see that kind of leadership. Um, we'll see. Key initiatives in 2017, optimize the system uh, better, make sure we're, we're doing the correct treatment. And uh, I think that's really the, the key area there is just making sure that we are managing the assets and performing the right treatments at the right time. That's what the tool is really all about. So, so with that... Welcome to each of you to IUC 2016. Let's give all of us, a, all of you, a round of applause for being here. <laughs>